Hi everyone, welcome to week two of our organization challenge. So this week we are gonna stay on the same topic of tools and we are going to talk about rulers, mats, measuring tapes, and gauges. So anything that cuts and anything that measures is what we're gonna focus on this week. So let's first talk about scissors and that's kind of what inspired this entire thing was that I had a ton of scissors. If you remember way back in one of my vlogs, I talk about that and I just was kind of appalled at myself that I had so many in my sewing room. And I know some of you commented and said, well, it's important to have a pair at every station. And I, I totally agree with that, but I'm the type of person that I will carry those scissors uh, like from one place to another and I won't keep them in that station. So for me, having excess just does not work. Uh, so I came up uh, for this week, I've been playing with a few, um, I don't know, strategies to help me with that. And one of them is that I carry around with me this container uh, that I made. And this is a pattern by the company Patterns by Annie. And it's a great, great tote that I made a few years ago. I love it. It's intense. It's not an easy make, but it is worth it. So what I've been doing is putting that at my workspace. And as I use something, um, I put it back into that. And then at the end of the evening, when I'm cleaning up for the day, I uh, will put all those things away where they go. And that's worked really well for me. If I can get that into a habit, I'm going to do that. But I think that's what's important for us to realize is we're organizing our tools and especially our scissors, our rotary cutters, um, our mats, our rulers, all that stuff is, you know, making sure that it's easily put away and that it's easily accessible. So for example, if I'm always using my six inch ruler, which is one of my go-to rulers, I want to make sure that it's where I can grab it when I need it. And that's, Part of all of this is making sure that things are enjoyable to use and they're easy to find. So that's kind of what I'm talking about when we're, when we're trying to organize our spaces, make sure that we have the things that we need all the time near us. And maybe the things like say, um, pinking shears, which by the way, I have two really good pairs of, I don't need two really good pairs of pinking shears, but pinking shears, I, I don't use all the time. Maybe you do. Uh, but I don't. I only use them when I'm making tote bags or anything round or anything that I would need that ease uh, in the seam allowance. So that's something I can maybe put away in a drawer and just know where it's at. The opposite of that would be um, my K Buckley scissors, which I use all the time. So I keep them where I can reach them all the time. So I'm going to show you how I'm organizing my scissors and I'm also going to show you how I'm organizing the other tools. And the first thing I'm going to do is sort out those cutting tools from all the other stuff that I have, because as you can see, I have a lot of tools. So let's look at that now. So I pulled everything together that I had that had to do with cutting and things were quite a mess. So I was pulling out scissors and sorting them together along with, um, I have some corner turners and some uh, rotary cutters and seam rippers and gauges and all kinds of things. So I was, I was getting everything together, making sure I cleaned out all the little nooks and crannies so I could get all the lids and everything like that together with all of the scissors. Um, so this is me doing that. Uh, so I decided also because I was trying to decide what scissors to keep, I um, tried them out, started cutting with them and um, seeing which ones cut the best and the ones that didn't I got rid of much to um, uh, my disappointment. Uh, so I probably, I think I ended up getting rid of uh, 20 pairs of scissors, some of them gingers even. Uh, I donated them to a local church uh, who's, they're going to have a big yard sale. So hopefully they'll make some money at that. I just couldn't um, keep everything and I wanted to but I couldn't. and. Um, Kind of broke my heart and it was difficult to get rid of some of the scissors because some were given to me as gifts and uh, some were you know just things I've had forever but I really needed the best tools that I could find and I ended up keeping I think 14 pairs so even now I still have way too many uh, but I just couldn't part with them so hopefully I will be able to call out some of those uh, as time goes on so here you can see that I'm uh, pulling other tools out and really just trying to decide what I'm keeping and where I'm keeping it uh, this was a tough process and it seems silly, but I think because I am kind of a craft hoarder, uh, I really am attached to a lot of things that uh, don't work and uh, don't work in my space. So maybe you can relate to that. Um, I really do need to make sure I have the best tools and uh, that I get rid of the tools that I don't use and the things I don't gravitate towards. 
I'm going to fast forward through a lot of this and cut um, some of this stuff out because it is kind of boring to sit and watch me just kind of go through these tools. I know you can tell that I kind of uh, cut and pasted different pieces of this process, so it is a little choppy. I will post another video of the entire process of me just cleaning out these scissors. I have a ton of footage, so I'll put that up if you're interested. And I'll put a link here for that, too. All right, let's talk about rulers. I am a sucker for a really good ruler, okay? And uh, tools in general. I, if it's gimmicky and something that I just think, oh, that would be really cool to have, I buy it. And I have some that are even still in their packaging. So uh, for me, I need to either use it or lose it. I needed to try them out, see if I love it, and if I love it, keep it, and if I don't, get rid of it. And same thing with the rulers. I have some in their packaging, you know, do I need all these rulers? Not really. I have a lot of specialty rulers. They're a lot of fun to use. I like making quilts with them, but uh, I do have way too many. So rulers are another thing that we need to look at and to take care of. So your tasks for this week uh, are, um, I, I try to give you five tasks. I know some are overwhelming, but I'm gonna give you five anyway, okay? Um, and I want you to look at your, your cutting tools, your seam rippers, your, anything that would cut things and measure things and figure out what do you need and if you don't need it donate it um if it's in really bad shape throw it out it's okay to throw it out. i'm giving you permission right now to throw out things that don't work you don't want to donate them because somebody else is going to get it and be just as frustrated with it as you are so get rid of it and again going back to the minimalist mom you know she'll put things in uh quarantine which i know is a really popular word right now right but she'll put things in quarantine and if she doesn't need them in a month she gets rid of them at that point so maybe that's a strategy you could use too uh, and then I want you to put everything where you need it to be. So if you're like me and need it right beside your sewing space, or if you need a container like I use to carry it around with me as I sew all day, you know, try to figure out what process works for you and what's going to make it as easy as possible to get those things put away and care for your tools, take care of them. So the ones that you are keeping, you know, make sure that you oil them, like, or you clean them or change the blades. Those blades on our uh, rotary cutters, I know they're expensive, but what a difference. It might save you even an accident from cutting yourself. You know, if you have a nice sharp blade, it's gonna save you frustration if you you know are cutting fabric and you just can't get through it i hate that when you get a little nick and you can't get that little itty bitty piece and you have to dig out the scissors you know it's just going to save you that the, the little things that bug us as makers you know uh, if you have good working tools so definitely take care of them make sure that they're clean make sure that they're in good working order and maybe even want to replace some if you need to you know because let's face it you deserve good tools right we all deserve good tools. Uh, and the same thing with seam rippers. Now, remember seam rippers, that little tiny blade, it, it wears out. So you can try like using tin foil to sharpen it or even a file to sharpen it. But in reality, they do wear out. So it might be time to replace them too because they are, they're important too for unsewing, right? For ripping those out. The next thing I wanna challenge you to do is to take some of those tools that you have that you've never used and use them, try them out. Just like we did with the sewing machine, hopefully you did it last week, where you tried a new technique. I made a buttonhole, yay. Uh, it, you know, try um, some of these new tools that you haven't used before. Get reacquainted with some of your tools because some of them are really cool. Like you can make some cool stuff with some of these specialty tools, right? Uh, so learn to use them. And if you aren't ever gonna use it, just be honest with yourself. It's time to pass it on to somebody that might. And lastly, just make sure you return things to their home where they go, clean up. Uh, I try to clean up my sewing area uh, once a day. I usually set a timer for about 15 minutes and then I just tidy up everything and it just makes me feel better. Usually I do it at the end of the evening and that just makes me feel so much better coming into my space in the morning uh, and ready to sew. So I hope you enjoyed this segment uh, and check out my blog where I list all of these things and talk a little bit more in detail. Uh, and I will see you next week for the next organization challenge. Woohoo. All right. See you then. Bye.